And so one of the questions was, how do we add the Hedera level of security and performance and fairness to like a fabric stack? And the most direct answer was, well, we could use file system and we could use smart contracts, but if we want to be the most efficient at this, why don't we just reach straight down into the Hashgraph algorithm and expose that and tie that together? Welcome to Hedera Hashgraph's Gossip About Gossip. I'm Daniel Francis. I'm Ken Anderson. And I'm Paul Madsen. If you are a developer, an entrepreneur, crypto enthusiast, or just trying to learn more about how distributed ledger technology and Hedera Hashgraph will impact your industry, then you'll love the episodes that we have coming up. Bookmark us, add us to your podcast app, and stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Paul Madsen. Welcome to Hedera Hashgraph Gossip About Gossip. Uh, I'm joined today by Ken Anderson. Hey, Ken. Hey, Paul. Good to be back. Yeah, I enjoy these chats. I'm I'm never quite sure whether we're arguing or agreeing uh, with each other, but that's a kind of a fun limbo to be in. Agreed. (laughs) (laughs) So I have two goals. I want to talk about the new consensus service offering that uh, we recently announced. And I also want to use, at some point during our conversation, in a justifiable manner, this sound effect, which this recording app gives us. See, it's, it's been staring yeah. at me for a year, but I haven't yet found a justification to use it. Well, you know, H bars. Okay. But let's, as I said, it has to be appropriate to the conversation. It can't be forced. Got to be natural. You missed your cue. I did, true. It'll <laughs> come again. It'll come again. Okay. So yeah, today's main topic is the consensus service. And, you know, let's dig into why we think it's useful and valuable, noteworthy, how it works, how it's going to complement and supplement the, the services that we've already announced. So let's kick off. First of all, what is the consensus service? What, what is the service that we are offering to apps? We call it the fourth service, but really it's the first service. And the reason I say that is from the beginning, we were talking about what services to offer on Hedera. And we knew that we needed to have a cryptocurrency service from a security perspective. And I think the market forcing function was to have smart contracts and even file system as services from the beginning. But I think even before any of that discussion started, there was this discussion internally to have this consensus service, the idea that you can pass a message into this service and the service would order the the message globally and then you would have the basic fundamentals of hashgraph available to you on a hedera service layer in other words when, when we talk about hashgraph what are we coming to consensus about it's finality of timestamp and ordering in a fair way that is asynchronous byzantine fault tolerant or uh, you know secure the gold standard of security in a distributed system. But ultimately, we're looking for those timestamps and that ordering. And I think there were a few projects and workshops and use cases we were working on that really became forcing functions for us to accelerate or move forward the Hedera consensus service when maybe originally we thought we could probably postpone it until a later point. But now that we're building it out and now that we're seeing it, starting to play out in some of these workshops, it becomes apparent how powerful this service is. And we can talk a little bit more about that. But fundamentally, what we're doing is taking the core Hashgraph properties, the ordering and time stamping and exposing that on a service level. So the, the, the workshops and use case discussions that you identified, was it the case that those use cases couldn't be addressed by the services we already had, the crypto smart contract and file? Well, they could, but there were a lot of inefficiencies. And I'll give you an example. So we had engaged the Hyperledger Fabric community and we're looking at, okay, how do we take the consensus layer, which in Fabric, if you're familiar with that, they've got what's called an orderer layer. So you've got this orderer that sits at the bottom of the stack and you pass transactions into it it orders those transactions, and then uh, chain code runs against it in the top part of the stack. And so we could have applied file system or smart contracts to replace the order, but then we lose huge amounts of efficiency because smart contracts require a certain amount of compute, and there's some additional logic that needs to be programmed in. 
And file system requires us to think from the perspective of files. And so we have to write files and, and read certain things. And it wasn't as efficient as, say, maybe just reaching right down into the guts of Hedera, which is the hash graph consensus layer, which gives you that ordering that the orderer is trying to accomplish. So there was kind of an efficiency discussion there of, well, if you have Fabric, which requires an orderer anyway, and right now it's kind of dependent on a semi-centralized ordering service. You can use Kafka or you can use PBFT as part of Fabric to get that ordering service, but you lose things like fairness, security, performance. There's lots of things uh, that you lose when you adopt those types of applications. Now, to be clear, Kafka is probably one of the more performant solutions, but you lose the fairness and security component of it in a distributed network. And so one of the questions was, how do we add the Hedera level of security and performance and fairness to like a fabric stack. And the most direct answer was, well, we could use file system and we could use smart contracts, but if we want to be the most efficient at this, why don't we just reach straight down into the hash graph algorithm and expose that and tie that together? So you've, you've said security. Can, be, can you be more specific about what aspect of security that you know a hyperledger deployment hooking into Hedera for consensus timestamp and ordering what security are we providing there? Yeah, so it kind of ties in with fairness a bit. We'll say that security on a relatively large public network, we're talking about the ABFT property, the asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance property of Hashgraph. The idea that there is a two-thirds requirement to come to consensus and we're fault tolerant against up to one-third of the network, either being faulty or malicious. And so that's what I mean by securities. You kind of get this resilience and protection or fault tolerance against up to one third of the network having failures or being malicious. And technically, the larger, more distributed network you have, you get more security because it is larger and distributed and it is harder to manipulate. And so what we're basically saying is you can have a relatively small fabric private network that leverages the benefit of a larger, more secure network by using a consensus service or an ordering service in the way that we've applied it for Fabric. So we get to take all of the properties of the larger, more secure ABFT network of Hedera and applying that to even smaller private and permissioned networks of Fabric. So a, a key criteria for many of those Fabric deployments is, is just confidentiality of, of business data, right? And that, that's why they shy away from a public ledger like Hedera and choose to go hyperledger and, and comparable. So how do you reconcile that desire or requirement of confidentiality of business data and you know business partner interactions with pushing messages through Hedera. Yeah, I don't want to underemphasize this point at all. That's a, a very, very relevant point. And there have been some discussions we've been in where they just say, we can't use a public network because of privacy and security concerns. And I think that there have been a few ways to approach that. So, so let's talk a little bit about the structure of the Hedera consensus service. What does that API look like? And then we can kind of get into how we solve that problem maybe a little bit more. So the consensus service, uh, the way it works is that if I am a DAP developer, I create a topic. And I'm also going to define which keys have the authority to write messages to that topic. And then anybody who has the authority to write messages to that topic gets to write a message and pass that through as a transaction against that topic. Now on the back end, anybody can listen to any topic that they're aware of. So if they're aware of the topic, they can listen to it and see all the messages that have come to consensus and have been ordered, and they can see their timestamps and the order and receive that stream of topics or of messages that come through that topic. Just a question of clarification. Sure. You said create a topic. Where is that topic created and persisted? So that topic is created in uh, the Hedera API. So just okay. like you have other services, the file service and the cryptocurrency service, as a Hedera account holder, I can pay to create a topic. And a topic is, it's going to be either a sequence or, or a random set of characters that is defined by Hedera. 
to prevent any type of uh, collision potentially. So the idea is I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, create a new topic for me. And from my side, from the client side, internally, that topic is going to map, map to something meaningful that I need to have ordered. So in fabric, it may be my fabric network. I'm going to create a topic for my fabric network that I'm setting up. And that topic is going to be the topic that my orderer is going to connect to and pass all messages to and get all ordering from. And concretely, a topic is persisted in the Hedera state, but that's the only thing that will be persisted in state. That's right. So the topic itself will be persisted. The messages themselves are ephemeral. They're going to be there for a period of time, long enough to reach consensus, long enough for you to retrieve your records, and then they're going to disappear. And we'll talk about how that is uh, kind of resolved and made more practical here in a second. But the idea is basically you create this stream, this channel, if you will, that we call a topic through which certain approved parties can pass messages. Now you can set it up so that there is no requirement for key approval to pass the messages. In other words, you can create an open channel where anybody can pass messages in, but you know that's up to the implementation details. But in a fabric sense where you have a private network, that you want to have talk to this Hedera consensus service, they're probably going to have some controls on who can pass these messages in. And in a fabric network, it might be the peers that pass this in. It might be the orders that pass it in. There are particular roles in the fabric network that may be authorized to pass messages into this topic. And you might want to control that. So you have that option of controlling who can pass messages into this topic. Now, what happens on the back end is that these messages go through and get ordered. And there are a couple ways to handle this. Either you can have your private network constantly pinging the topic in Hedera Consensus Service to retrieve all the records of all of the messages as they're coming through and being ordered. Or you can depend on the mirror net. And this is kind of the model that we're going for because, as we just talked about, the topic is persisted in the state of Hedera, but the messages are only there for a very short period of time and enough time for you to retrieve the record. But if we have a mirror node that is receiving that stream of ordered messages, that mirror node can persist it as long as they need. And maybe uh, when I'm setting up my fabric network, I'm also setting up a mirror node. Maybe that's the model, that my fabric network has a mirror node that is receiving a stream of messages from Hedera, the main net, and then persists those messages on my behalf. Or maybe it's the case where somebody else has a mirror node set up and I subscribe to a service where I, I might get push notifications or I have a place where I can go retrieve that stream of messages and they'll persist it until I tell them not to persist it. And so there are multiple business models around how those messages would get persisted. But I think fundamentally, the mirror node becomes critical for many use cases. And that's kind of the model that we're moving forward with with a lot of our proofs of concept. The idea that you're going to push your messages into the main net, Hedera Consensus Service, and then you're going to listen to a mirror node that is going to give you those messages back per topic in consensus order. And then you can take those messages and act on them. So in Fabric, you can run those as if that is your orderer, and then your peers act on them according to the whatever rules you've set up in Fabric. But effectively, what we've done is we've taken a centralized ordering service and have replaced it with a more global, fair, and secure ordering service called Hedera Consensus. So as you described it, the messages effectively flow through Hedera. They're not stored on Hedera for any length of time, probably just three minutes. And they come out the other side, fairly timestamped and ordered. And then Hedera is done with them effectively. Well, the, the broader Hedera is not the mirror nets take over likely and, you know, make those ordered messages available to interested parties. That's right. Yeah. We can think of it as the messages flow through Hedera, get ordered, and then they're gone. And whoever's hosting that mirror node is going to be who's going to be responsible for making that available to the application layer. Now, again, the application layer may host its own mirror node. So in a Fabric private network, they may have their own mirror node, in which case we can truly say that the messages 
flow through Hedera and then right back to the client or back to the application layer. Right. And and the flow through, quote unquote, highlights the efficiencies you indicated earlier, because no compute happens on chain other than minimal effort to timestamp an order, just the normal consensus process. And no files are persisted. So we don't we don't have the rent burden and cost associated with default file storage. That's right. And keep in mind, I mean, this consensus is already happening. So all that we're doing is it's the equivalent of looking at the cryptocurrency service and using just the message field. So if you were to send a zero value cryptocurrency transaction or a transfer transaction with a message. Sorry, Ken, I missed that. What what did you say? What value? A, a zero value cryptocurrency. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ken. <laughs> Organically, right? Uh, yes, so, natural. So, yeah. So, it's like t- sending a zero value cryptocurrency transaction with something in the message field. This is something we talked about last year when I gave my talk about the power of the memo field at Hedera 18. The idea that you can use the memo field plus the mirror net and potentially with state proofs to facilitate other more efficient business processes without depending on smart contracts or file system. The reason why we talked about it in that sense was that that was the most efficient way to do what we were trying to accomplish. Cryptocurrency is the most efficient of the services on Hedera because it doesn't depend on the file system and it doesn't depend on smart contract layer. So the VM of processing some solidity contract code. So there aren't those dependencies. It's a first class citizen and it's baked in and you got to do it anyway. It's the most efficient. Well, this is even slightly even more efficient. Because not only do we not have to deal with file system and smart contract VM layers, we also don't have to deal so much with the cryptocurrency layers. There's a lot of stuff that happens on the cryptocurrency side, like pre-checks on balances and stuff like that, that may not be as necessary for the Hedera consensus service. Now, obviously, you got to pay for that service. So to be clear, there are some things going on on the cryptocurrency layer to facilitate that. But it's not directly related to the cryptocurrency service. It's basically streamlining that, taking that memo field and creating a service around that memo field. Right. No no disrespect to your Hedera 18 session, but the memo field was kind of a kludge, right? And this normalizes and refines that model. So can we tie back to the Hyperledger integration question, specifically how do we maintain appropriate confidentiality of these messages as they flow through Hedera? Yeah, that's right. So now that we kind of understand the structure of the consensus service, so the idea that it is an API in Hedera that you create topics and submit messages through, and those topics may be controlled or or publicly and uncontrolled. And then that flows through Hedera consensus service to a mirror node, that an app listens to, we kind of understand the flow of the messages. The question now is, okay, great. The whole world can now see this flow of messages. We have a few options for privacy. And the reason why I bring this up is because these are practical options that have come up during our workshop discussions. One of them is, well, let's not send the whole message. Let's just send a hash of the message. And so if there's some business logic that we have to act on locally, then maybe it's sufficient that we send a hash of that data that is going to act as input into that logic to the Hedera consensus service. It gets ordered, and then I know what order to act on that data. Now, there are some challenges with that approach, and I'll tell you one of the challenges is how do we know that everybody has the underlying data on which the hash was created, and that becomes another level of complexity. How do we propagate the underlying data on which the hashes are being ordered? That's one question, and that's a challenge that has yet to be solved. Probably the more direct and more brute force way to do this, while also ensuring that everybody appropriately has the underlying data, is to encrypt the data end-to-end. In other words, we're using Hedera strictly for the timestamping and ordering function, and the input into Hedera is encrypted, and the output has to be decrypted. So this means that there's going to be some key management and key coordination. Either it's asymmetric keys or symmetric keys with some type of handshaking and negotiation going on. But fundamentally, what we're saying is, yeah, you're going to use the Hedera consensus service to order every message. 
but every message is going to be encrypted and we effectively become a channel for messages to pass through or for data to pass through in which the, that data or those messages are timestamped and ordered. Now you can have really truly decentralized applications because if we know that all of the applications are running the same logic and they're all getting the same input, we know that they're all going to have the same output. And that's kind of just deterministic model. And maybe you have different types of messages. Maybe you have messages that pass the logic that's going to be run so that every client now can be sure they've got the same logic because that logic has been passed through HCS. And then the inputs are also passed through HCS. So not only do we know what order the inputs are coming in, but we know what order of logic versions come before which inputs or come after which inputs. So we know that everybody's getting the exact same output. And so that's kind of the idea here. If I can build a mobile app or a server side app that is not a smart contract living on the DLT, if I can just build a server side or a mobile app and its whole job is to encrypt my inputs, pass it through HCS, the Hedera consensus service, and then process all of the inputs from all of the players in the order that they have reached consensus in through the Hedera consensus service, I know that every app is going to be in sync with what their output is. So if you're thinking about a game, for example, when you and I start up a game, we pass around kind of a handshaking transaction through this encrypted messaging channel and just say, okay, we all agree that this is the game we're going to play. Here are the rules. Here's the logic. And we all agree on what that's going to be. And that might be a checksum, or it might actually be the logic itself, or it might be a config file or something to that effect. But fundamentally, we're saying that we agree on what logic we're going to run, what processes we're going to run. And then we play our game, which is just a series of actions, of events, that is just data that gets encrypted and passed into this ordering service. And then all of us are listening for the result. And then we take that result and process it locally and if all of that is done right, we're going to have the same output. If we have the same logic or the same process we're going to run and we have the same inputs because we're all broadcasting our inputs, we're going to have the same outputs or we're going to have the same state, the resulting state in our game. Right. If, if in the game, if you shoot me and I dodge around the same time, the ordering service, consensus service is going to order those based on the hash graph, gossip, etc., and everybody is going to agree that I lived because I dodged first. That's right. And what we're doing here is we're pushing the processing to the edge. So we're basically saying, let's not run the logic on the ledger, but we can use ordered messages. And, and here's why Hedera is so ideal for this. Number one, it's really fast. Number two, it's final. And that's really important. The finality is really important. If it's fast and final then we can act on it in a very quick way and it becomes viable for lots of business processes. One of the reasons why it's so hard to do the same model with maybe traditional blockchain is the finality component, is that things can change in some period of time and it becomes very difficult to make final decisions on a business side if we don't have finality of logic and finality of inputs, which is part of the reason why they run smart contracts on the ledger because they actually are going to run every scenario, every potential scenario gets run, and whichever one gets confirmed is the block that is the most confirmed, is the logic that is going to become the rule, or the king, the winner of that logic race. In our case, because we have that finality, we know that everybody's going to have the same output relatively quickly. There's no waiting for confirmations. There's no need to run that logic on the, on the ledger. We can run that all locally. Now, to be fair, we still need to check in every once in a while. We need to check in to make sure we're all still running the same logic. We might even want to periodically check in and make sure that we're all still getting the same output just to make sure that something's not going to miss somewhere. But that's a periodic thing, and that's just a health check. But the way that the Hedera consensus service works, there are very easy ways to discover whether or not we're missing particular important messages. For example, not only are we getting the messages from the topic, but those messages also have corresponding sequence numbers. So we know when we've missed a message in the sequence, it also has a running hash. 
so we can replay messages and figure out not only what was missing, but what might have been tampered with. And periodically, we're taking those running hashes and generating state proofs. So now we have the Hedera network itself attesting or notarizing, if you will, the periodic running hashes. And we can do replays against that as, uh, as well to prove that this hasn't been tampered with. So there's a bunch of things that Hedera Consensus Service is providing from the get-go that make it relatively trivial for us to be sure that we're all getting the same inputs and that we're not missing anything. Very cool. So Ken, you've been talking to uh, customers and, and council members about HCS. What's, what's the reaction been? Overwhelmingly positive. It's interesting because when you sit in a room, some of them are enterprise and some of them are startups. But you sit in rooms with these really smart engineers who are trying to really figure out the value of blockchain or distributed ledgers in their business. They can feel that there's something really meaningful here. They feel that there's there's this next phase of technology that's going to change the way the world does business. But there's something missing. And when we sit down and we say, listen, run your logic wherever you want. Really what you're looking for is consensus on the order and in some cases, the timestamp is meaningful as well. But really what we want to know is that the order of messages is consistent across all of the distributed clients that are going to operate on those messages. And you can just see the light bulbs turn on and you can just see them get excited. And, and suddenly, you know, we come in talking about one potential supply chain use case and we end up walking out talking about 10 different use cases that they can see being applicable in their business space. And so it is overwhelmingly a, a positive reaction. And there are a lot of people who are chomping at the bit to get access to this. And we're working really hard to make it available. But the cool thing is, is like we're already doing this under the hood anyway. It's just a matter of exposing it. And so our engineering team is hard at work preparing that. But we recently did a, a joint white paper with one of our friends and partners over at IBM. And Lehman did a joint webinar about the Hedera consensus service. And so you can see when you have companies like IBM looking at this and going, wow, that is that looks like an exciting technology, we know that there's something there. And from an engineering perspective, you know, I'm looking at this going like, this makes sense for a distributed application. This to me is a distributed application, meaning that my application itself is running in a distributed environment meaning everybody has their own copy of the code running on their client. And really what we're doing is making sure that A, we're running the same logic and B, we have all the same inputs and C, we can prove that things haven't been tampered with along the way. And when we can do that, that's really a distributed application in my mind. Right. You're, you're running code. The code is distributed, but only people for whom the code is relevant are running that. You're not asking strangers to run your code and that's right. compensate them accordingly. Ken, uh, this has been great. Thanks very much for uh, talking about consensus. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. See you, Ken. Thank you for listening to Hedera Hashgraph's Gossip About Gossip. If you liked the episode, please subscribe, rate, and review, and also share and tell your friends. Or connect with us on social media like Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Hashgraph, particularly if you want to leave us feedback on the podcast. We look forward to hearing from you.